everybody, it's Spazkid, and it's Sunday, so we're going to go over the Sunday tutorial. Um, lesson two, we're going to talk about filters and effects. Uh, today we're going to talk about colors and swatches over here on the side of the library. We're going to talk a little bit about the library. We're going to talk about the properties and filters. We're not going to be talking about the output, because the reason why I have output is because I have a VCAM, and it gives me output whenever, but we're not getting into this shit. We'll get into this a little later. Uh, but we'll be talking about gradients and how to change your gradients, colors, and all this shit. And we're also going to be talking about how to set up your hotkey. So we're going to start immediately. Uh, what we're going to be learning today, what the hotkey we're learning, you can change any other one you want, but the one we're learning today is the smooth to give it that shake effect to your animation. So what we need to do is we need to go up to edit, and we need to go to keyboard shortcuts. When we're in keyboard shortcuts, you'll see drawing, menu, command, and all this stuff. Go to modify. Modify will bring you to shape. When you see shape, click shape. Shape will give you another drop down menu, and you should see smooth. Now, I already have my smooth set as Control Alt Z. You can change it to whatever you want, but make sure it's not uh, one that's already being used, like Control Alt. I'll give you an example. If you did Control and A, this is already a command that's called, this shortcut is already assigned to select all. So it'll basically tell you what you cannot use, and you'd probably go and change it, but for now, I'm just going to stick with control. I'm going to change this. No, I'm going to press uh, control Z and I'm going to click change. And that should add it to the shortcuts. If it doesn't, then click the square, the fucking plus, and it should add it as well. We're going to then go ahead and click OK. And that should automatically set smooth. It's control Z. It doesn't always happen all the time, so you got to give it a little bit of time. Like, for instance, if I, it might work. Now, you see, I'm pressing control Z and it's not working. So we're going to do everything I just said again. I'm going to go keyboard shortcuts, modify. Uh, shape and smooth. I'm going to click it again, go to change, and I'm going to press OK. And now I'm going to see if it works. Yeah, it works. Okay. So I'm going to give you an example of shaking. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and show you what I basically mean by shaking. So I'm going to insert a keyframe and I'm going to press Control Z about three times, no, two times because it looks terrible when I did it three. And what it should give you, I'm going to uh, space it out using Control F. Control 5, about three spaces each. And as you see, it gives that shake effect. So if I was to preview it in Flash, which I'm going to do right now, go to File, Publish Preview, go to Flash. As you can see, it has a bit of a filter, uh, shake effect. And you can change it to any hotkey you want, but this is just for smoothing. And most people use smoothing when they're using, like, to shake or something. And it's a really useful. To change your shortcut keys to, to function for what uh, is easier to use is highly recommended because you're going to fucking want to be able to access stuff fast and you're not going to want to have to manually come in and manually change these lines. That's just going to take forever. Okay, so he's gone over smooth. Now we're going to talk about um, filter effects and effects in general, like blend and stuff. Stuff you normally didn't know, maybe you did, but I'm just going to tell you guys anyways. So what we're going to start with is we're gonna, I already made a symbol. Um, this basic sad Pac-Man thing, ghost thing. Uh, if you ever want to break a symbol apart to turn it back into something else, simply press Control and B together. So that's Control plus B, and that breaks symbols apart. So what that does is, what that basically means when you press Control and B is, if you have a symbol, and let's say, like, oh, I need to edit this symbol, but I don't feel like going into the, editing the symbol and changing everything, like going in, oh, man, I fucked it up in the library. Now, like, let's, for example, if I was to give him a mouth, you see, now he has a mouth. But let's say I didn't want that. So I'm going to press Control Z until the mouth's gone. So I'm going to come back out here. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to press control B, that breaks it apart, I make the mouth, and as you see, it doesn't interfere with your library picture. So remember that, that's very important. You don't want to change your symbols if you're using symbols, okay? That's very important. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that in, I'm going to press control B, and I'm going to convert this into a graphic. I'm going to convert this into a movie clip. And I'm going to show you what I mean. Um, I'm going to give you an example of what I'm talking about uh, when you can only use filter effects. So, as you see, I made a graphic and I made a movie clip in my library. 
So I come over here to filters, and I'm going to go ahead and lay my, my movie clip out. And when I come to filters, and by the way, if you don't have filters available, simply go up to the windows at the top of the file, and then you'll see properties there and just click filters. Filters should bring up properties as well, so remember that. You go to filters, and you see, since it's a movie clip, it's available. You can add filters or whatever you want. See, I'm going to delete that, and I'm going to add a graphic instead, and I'm going to show you the option you get. As you see, I don't get an option. That's because you can only edit text and movie clips. You can add filter effects to text and movie clips. Okay, you can you can add stuff to graphics, but you're going to have to convert it to a symbol first. You're going to I mean a movie clip first in order to add filter effects. So if you want to have a graphic with a filter effect, it has to be converted to a movie clip. Remember that you can't turn graphics into filter effects. So, I have my symbol and I go to filters. I click the arrow cuz if you guys really don't understand instructions, there's instructions literally right there. And I come over here and I get a mess of options. A mess of options. So I go to adjust color and I can adjust the color. I can make it whatever the hell I want. I can make it as bright as I want, as dark as I want. And then I can change the color, the hue of it. I can reset that. It's pretty easy. Uh, the gradient bevel looks like shit. I don't like gradient bevel, but you can mess with it here. I don't recommend doing it because it just doesn't look good, but I mean you're welcome to. I mean there's just a mess of options to use. There's there's glow, blur, drop shadow. Um there's just tons of stuff. You guys are welcome to mess around with that, but that's basically how you add filters. You add filters to movie clips and text. Now we're gonna talk about a special kind of effect and that's blend. And blend is available in the properties menu. I think of anything really graphics or um graphics or movie clip it pretty much is for anything actually everything set bitmap so movie clip a graphic and you would probably have to convert text to a movie clip let me let me make sure go over here I'm going to type something uh I'm going to convert it into a symbol S. I'm going to come over here. Yeah, you have to convert text to a symbol in order to mess with it in the blend. So, since I already have this as a movie clip, I'm just going to go ahead and insert a background. Uh, I'm going to insert this cherry background, and I'm going to put this Pac-Man over it. So, I have this background, and I have this. Now, when you're in the properties, after I click the movie clip, I'm going in the properties of the movie clip, and I'm going to go to blend. When I go to blend, I get a mess of options. This gives really cool effects to pretty much anything. Uh, it's good to use when you're using like sunsets and you can put it over your thing. Just change the the lighting basically. Uh, let me just give you an example of some of them. This would be overlay. As you see, it sort of like blends into the background. Hard light, it makes um, it basically just becomes like a harder version of um, overlay. Uh, subtract makes it minus uh, screen there's just a bunch of stuff to choose from and blend is really cool when you're using certain things like uh, let me give you an example I'm gonna change this background to green machine and I'm gonna come over here just gonna make this normal I'm gonna go ahead I'm just gonna make a color I'm gonna go ahead and remove the no color for the pencil and I'm just gonna make a simple I right click press convert to symbol I'm going to turn it into a movie clip and I'm going to come over here and I'm going to make this a hard light. I'm going to stretch this over this so you can see what I mean. See as you can see I changed the, cov the color of the Pac-Man thing to blue because this is hard light. This is hard light over. I can go to overlay and it you can just experiment and try different things. You can, you can get some really cool effects out of blend and there's just a lot of stuff you can do and that's pretty much all there is to do with blend. You can uh, just mess around with that. There's tons of options and just go crazy. So now I'm going to talk about the library. The library is fairly easy to use. Uh, let's say I had another flash open. I could go ahead and import uh, graphics and stuff from that flash if I simply choose it from here. It would drop down all the graphics here and I could just drag them onto my library. Uh, that's one really nifty thing. Uh, Another thing is you can change the background of the graphics. So whatever this is would probably interfere with your graphic color. So as you see, 
all my graphics have a blue background, but I don't like that, so I'm just going to turn it back to white, and I have a white background. Uh, if you ever want to change the properties again, uh, like let's say you don't want this text file to be SSS, and you want it to be a uh, graphic, and you want it to be called faggot, so you can simply go to properties by right-clicking, go to properties, and it opens up the symbol properties again. So I'm going to go ahead and go to graphic, and I'm going to call it faggot. I'm going to press OK. That basically just turned that into faggot. So I no longer have S. It now says faggot and it's a graphic. If I want to duplicate it and change it into something completely different, I'll right click it, go to duplicate, and it'll say copy. I could call it copy or I could call it faggot. And this time, instead of making it a graphic, I'm going to make it a movie clip because I'm going to mix it up a little bit. So now I have faggots, same thing, only it's a movie clip and it's a graphic. I can come in here and edit it, and I can change the text to be something completely different. And that will not interfere with my original one because I duplicated it. And that also helps if you want to make more than one symbol of certain mouths, and you can change a little bit of it. Uh, if you want to do it lazily, you can do that. And that can also help in that way. Uh, you can also insert a new folder and you can call it work folder or whatever the hell you want and you can pretty much just shift and select everything you want and you can put in your work folder this also helps in saving memory and like if you have too many graphics like you have around a thousand graphics on your uh, on your uh, workspace because trust me sometimes you can get a thousand graphics that's not that common but I mean it is possible to get a thousand graphics I've gotten fifteen thousand graphics on um on a single project file, a single flash, so it is possible and you're going to want to be able to sort your stuff, so definitely make folders and sort your stuff out. Being uh, sorted out is extremely important in flash in saving memory and also saving fucking time. Okay, so we talked about the library, we talked about setting up smoothing, we talked about filter effects, and last but not least we're going to talk about gradients. Now. Personally, from my opinion, I would not recommend gradients as coloring. Gradients is shit. You use gradients smart, okay? Don't use it for coloring. Use it for, like, effects and just shit like that. Do not shade with gradients, okay? This is in 2003. This is 2011. Seriously. It looks like fucking asshole. So I'm going to go to linear, and I already have something set up right now. Before I even start, you're going to see that I have my thing selected. Sometimes you'll notice that, uh, what's going on? I don't have it selected. That's because you might have accidentally set, for instance, I just set stroke color, and I set it as this. And I didn't want to do that. I'm going to make it solid again, and I'm going to make it this color, and I'm going to click the paint bucket, and I'm going to set this to linear. So if you ever wonder why something's not happening, it might be because you might have the pencil tool as the gradient's color. But for now, I'm just going to go ahead and make a square Oh, uh, that's not a fucking square. There we go. I'm going to remove this line. There we go. Basically, you just have a gradient square right now. So when we come over here to the color swatches, you have a bunch of options. You have solid color. This is basically just a solid color. It's as simple as that. You have linear. Linear gives you like a gradient and a line. And you have radial, which is sort of like a spiraling out circle. I don't recommend using radial that much because radial looks like ass, so I don't use it. And there's bitmap. And bitmap, you can turn, uh, you can color your items with bitmap, which is okay, I guess. So let's say if I go to bitmap and I choose this, I can, since it's selected right there, there you go. Like, if you really want to use that, it looks like shit, but you're welcome to. You can also change the size of it by simply going to the Gradial Transform tool and making it bigger. Okay, so you're welcome to do that, but we're not worried about that. We're talking about uh, gradients right now. So we're going to go to Linear, and right now I have a Gradial thing, and I have it set at 100. I'm just going to put this at Normal. This is normally what I have it set at. Let's say by accident you, s you insert a bunch of these. You're like, fuck, I didn't want to do that. Well, all you got to do is simply click and drag off. That's it. Just cl click and drag off. It'll drag everything off and you won't have to interfere with anything. Let's say you want to insert something in the middle or there you go. Put it right in there but you don't like it, take away it. And there you go. Everything's back to normal. Just simply drag and take it off. 
you don't need to like drag all the way out here just a little tiny drag just in this general area right here but let's say you make a design and you don't make a square let's say for instance I'm just gonna scribble something this is not any shape or form of anything this is like splooge okay just think of it as jizz so as you see I'm coming in here and I'm coloring it I'm gonna change this back to black so it doesn't interfere so I have my color and I don't want this effect and I, I can change this all I want but I'm looking more to edit this it's very easy go to the free transform tool and hold it it'll give you a drop down menu this is your gradients transform tool this is what you use to edit your gradient tool what I mean is you click this and it gives you this arrow you can move this around you can do whatever you want you give your gradients whatever the fuck you're looking for you can spin around in circles you can change the the way it's located there's so much you can do and it works the same thing with radial only it's more of a circle see I did that everything's a radiant circle thing so I come over here I go to radio gradient tool and I go to radial and um, I select it first I've turned everything into this let's come over here go to gradients tool and as you see I made a circle I did the same thing I did linear only I had radial selected and this gives me a circle this gives you the same option to just uh, mess around with gradients you can change the size of the color you can make it bigger and so on. As you can see, let's give you an example. Let's say you select all these and you make these all one color. But you don't want it all one color. Let's say you want these three to be completely different. What you're going to do is you're going to go back from your gradients transform tool, you're going to go back to free transform tool and you're going to use shift and click every individual one and delete these colors. Okay, these are going to leave blank colors. There's nothing in here. These are literally just lines. Okay, this is what I do, so keep in mind, there might be other ways to do it, but this is what I do. What I'm going to do is I'm just simply going to fill it with the colors I wanted. So, I don't really care what I use, I'm just going to find an example, just, just an example of colors. I'm going to change the yellow, since I wanted that to be orange, pretty sure I said that. So I'm going to go over linear, and instead of having pink, I want to make it orange. And yellow. I'm going to stretch it out to make it look basically like the other one. And you can do the same for this one. Go over to this color, come to linear, change it to whatever you want. Come to this one, go to linear, and you can change it to whatever you want as well. And that's about as simple as it is to change the colors and not have everything the same as you want it. Hey, okay, you guys, I decided I'd do a little special thing at the end. Uh, this is what we're going to be learning in the future. This is uh, this would be a complete learning <coughs> thing. So, um, this is an upcoming flash. I can't show you the beginning of this because it's extremely inappropriate for YouTube. And so, but I'm just going to go ahead and play it. You guys can see. On the street like you were a boat and I am the captain. Nah. I really hope I get my patch for this. Don't look at me, you fucking bitch. If you guys didn't know, that was Stamper. Uh, I also have Utah and um, Eagle Raptor help me with this flash. This is going to be a big collaborative type flash coming out in maybe a few weeks to a month. But it's going to be extremely inappropriate, and you can see it on Newgrounds, but it's going to be well worth the wait. Uh, we put a lot of time and a lot of um, sweat, tears, and semen into it, so I hope you guys will... Uh, enjoy it when it comes out and uh, next week we'll be learning about simple action scripts we'll also be learning about how to set up our vcam uh, and we're going to be doing some minor animation to go with the vcam so you guys can expect that oh and a little bit about the layers so yeah if you guys can wait a little bit that'll be coming soon so 